Hello everyone, Spencer here with RetouchTV.com and today I want to show you 5 ways to be faster in Photoshop. Now I know there's a lot of videos out there that show you how to be faster in Photoshop, but every time I searched for one when I was first learning, it was always just practice. And I never really understood what that meant. So today I'm going to try to go a little bit more in depth of that, give examples of what you should practice, how you should actually practice, and how it will help you. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, learn, practice, and create your own shortcuts. So this is a very simple one. Um, to understand the shortcuts, best way is to see them. Edit, keyboard shortcuts, and this gives you a reflection of your navigation bar. So everything that you see here, file, edit, image, layer, file, edit, image, layer. It is repeated up here. So all your shortcuts and action, or all your shortcuts that you can access from the list from the navigation bar up here are in this list here and it shows you the shortcuts associated with them so if you want to learn all of your shortcuts you can just look through here now if you want to create a shortcut let's say for copy merged you want to change that to I don't know control alt shift M you can do that now apparently that's already taken which is crazy I don't know what it actually is um, but you can always just cancel with escape or you can hit enter and that will save the the shortcut and whenever you do something new that's how you would get to it so for instance one of the things that I do is image adjustments brightness contrast that is not something that is normally there usually it's blank so if I delete that it'll be like this and then I want to access brightness contrast so I hit control comma and I can hit any keys so long as it's not already taken up by another command hit enter and then I'll press OK now we'll go back to our image and control comma brings up my brightness contrast bar which allows me to start doing whatever I need to do now when I say practice these I literally mean practice going through each command now I don't say retouch an image I don't even think you should touch this image really I think you should just pull up all the menus that you can try to see if you can remember all of the commands and honestly it goes by a lot faster you're retouching and, and you're editing and all of the work that you, that you need to do in an image just so much faster once you know what needs what the uh, shortcut is so just practice with your fingers on your keyboard constantly and I mean literally with your hands on your keyboard practice where your fingers go and that will help you a lot with your retouching number two use actions now if you don't have your actions set up on your sidebar like I do right here you can just go to window go to actions and that will open up wherever you want you can move it and place it into your list uh, wherever you need it to go so we're going to go ahead and see I have some set, some actions already set up here and you can always go online and find some actions for free or for sale. I plan to give some out for free and sell some on my website, RetouchTV.com. It's not up yet, but eventually it will be, so come back in the future. I'll make a video dedicated just for that also. But let's go ahead and start a new action. This is going to be our set of actions, so we'll just call this a practice set. And in this set this is like our folder we can create multiple actions so let's start a new action we click on this button right here and go to our window now in this window we have a name a set which chooses which one of these folders it places it under the function key so if you want to make a shortcut you can like F7 shift F7 will now make this function happen um, and you can even set a dedicated color to this if you wanted. So let's go ahead and hit record. And as you can see, once we do that, this little record button turns red. It's highlighted. And we see that the action has started. Action 1. And we didn't give it a, a designated name, which is why it's called Action 1. But we can even rename this later, um, which is something we might want to do, actually. So, oh, interesting. I wonder why... Photoshop seems to be cutting off right there. Let's try that again. There we go. That was weird. Um, so I'm going to 
for this action, let's just say I'm going to duplicate the layer. Um, I'm going to go to adjustments, shadow highlights, bring the shadows up a little bit just to kind of even it out, even though it doesn't look great. I'm just going to do it. And then highlights, I'll bring down a little bit. Um, let's just go ahead and open up. Nah, you know what? Let's do some curves. And we are going to make this like that. Just kind of a weird, almost like a flat image. But then we'll take this into here and add a little fun bit of color. All right. So this is going to be our image. And we're going to use this for the rest of our images. But the way that we do that is we're going to hit the stop button. And this actually, it selected the document. So I'm going to delete these. And now it's just going to have all of these that we saved. And we can also hit record and continue from there. So it's let's just say I want to flatten the image. And then I'll hit stop everything is going to save whatever you need to do under this action so we can select our next image we'll select our our action one and we can hit play or because we have our shortcut we can just hit shift F7 and as you can see the same effect has been applied to this image and all we had to do was hit shift F7. So all that work we did before, super easy, super fast. And you can do this with any kind of style. Anything that you feel is going to be repetitive. I have one for proofs. So whenever I need to make a proof for a client, um, I, instead of sending them the full image of the retouched uh, final, I'll send them the proof, which will be smaller and it'll have text over it. and and since I need to do that with so many images, everything needs to be done super quick and I don't have to worry about trying to redo it 20, 30 times every time I get a new client. Uh, so that's good. Actions, very useful. Number three, practice mouse movement and tablet usage. And I really mean to practice it. And there's a few different ways that I actually do this myself. So I will pull up a blank document and I don't do this as often as I should, so I'm not great at it. But if you've ever seen tutorials on drawing, you might recognize this. Just going in back and forth, creating this shape. And what it's doing is helping you get used to your control over the mouse or tablet. So if you're using a drawing tablet, this helps you get used to the position and the placement of your mouse and trying to make those lines and sizes of each um, I guess a twist I don't know what you would really call that each one of these the same size so hopefully with lots of practice you become good <laughs> better than me and this really helps you control your mouse and makes you a lot faster when it comes to retouching so one of the things that um, that I often need to do when I'm retouching is go from one spot to the other and actually her eyes might work very well for this practice also just moving your mouse from left pupil to right pupil constantly going back and forth and that is literally just gonna make it so that you can move your mouse from one spot to the next and know your position from your mouse pad your trackpad from your pen tablet over to your screen so no matter what you're using just practice trying to get from one spot to the other and see how fast you can get there and how accurate you can do it without going over the position so creating straight lines like this also is really helpful just going from left to right you can even do right to left you can set one up for up and down. It doesn't really matter so long as you're actually practicing your mouse movement. And I know it might sound silly, but one way that I do this a lot is with games. It's very useful to just get used to how your mouse works. If you use a mouse, that games work. 
trackpads, not so much. <laughs> and I know this is a very simple and easy one, but if you just have a podcast or you're watching a show, then just practicing your mouse movement over and over will really improve the speed of your retouching and designing. Doesn't matter what you're doing on Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, doesn't matter. Even if you're not using Adobe products, you're just you want to surf the web, this is going to make you go to your menus faster, go to exactly where you need to go whenever you need to go somewhere. It's just going to help you make your movements so much more precise and quick that it's insane. Number four, plan your next move. Now when I'm in this image, I'm going to zoom up close and we're going to uh, kind of clean up her skin a little bit, clean up this image so that there's a lot less distractions in it. So what we're doing first of all is just quickly looking through the entire image, seeing what we might want to uh, retouch when we're going through it. I'm going to be focusing on her face and her arm here. So when I'm going through this image and I decide to start retouching, I need to start planning what I'm going to do next. So let's say I want to remove these lines. Well, that's great. I just circled that line, but what am I looking at next? Probably going to be looking at this part and instantly go there. And while I'm doing this, I'm actually not looking here anymore. I'm looking up here and getting ready for the next part of the retouch that I need to work on. And this is going to make everything you do so much better. And it's a little bit difficult, I'll admit. Sometimes I'm not the best at it and I might mess up and have to go back. But once you have your mouse movement down from the previous um, suggestion or tip, uh, this will really become a lot faster for your retouching. And because you know exactly what you're doing, everything will come easy to you. And it's actually really funny how fast retouching can go when you're just looking at the next thing that you need to do. So right here, I'm going to look here, but then I'm also looking here and here and down here. I see this line. I mean, it's it's natural line, but I need to remove it because it's just a little bit of a distraction. All these things that I'm looking at are the next thing, not the current thing. It really helps with your planning and your entire workflow just constantly moving never pausing to think what you need to do next sure sometimes you need to step back you need to zoom out and and be like okay well what now what's the next move that I should do that's totally fine but if you're focused in on an area like you're cleaning her skin and you need to go to the next uh, let's say like blemish on her skin you don't need to look at what you're doing because you already know your mouse movement and you can know exactly where you're going to go as soon as you're done with the current thing you're working on. Little bit of a uh, um, difficult one here, but it really does help once you get it down. And last but not least, use smart objects. Now, this is going to really help you create um, an easier workflow. Instead of having to go back and try to fix something um, through the original image or have to redo something with a smart object by right clicking and convert to smart object, we now have the ability to save the changes that we made and save the stats and the data so that we can actually go back and change that data later on. So for instance, let's say we want to change, um, let's just do some levels here. Let's see. Let's say we darken it and then we want to go really dark with this image. So we'll just bring it all the way right here. And then we'll add a layer. Let's say we start, I don't know, brushing, just adding a bunch of random lines here. And before you know it, in our history, it's too far back to, to make the changes of the levels. We can't do that anymore because our history doesn't go that far. So now what do we do? Well, luckily, this is a smart object. So our levels are saved right here and all the stats are saved. We can actually double click on the word levels and as you can see all the data is still there and we can actually go back and adjust that. Let's say we want it to actually be really bright image. Maybe like right there. That's what we really wanted. Great. Now let's go ahead and keep working. Um, how about we change the color a little bit. 
So we're gonna well, we'll do this with uh, curves instead. Um, let's just say we want it to kind of be really warm. Oh, that's the wrong way. Really warm kind of feeling of an image. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go back to this. There, now it's kind of flat, but we're not gonna worry about it right now because we need a brush again. So we're gonna keep brushing over here. Oh man, this is great. All those brush strokes, we really needed that, but now we can't go back and change it. Luckily, like I said, smart object. As you can see, the next thing is saved. Our curves are saved, and that still saves all the detail that we needed right here to make our adjustment. Let's say we didn't want it to be that light right there. We wanna bring more detail into the shadows or whatever doesn't matter we have the option to do it and that's the point and we even have the ability to turn these off and on to see what we think it would look like without one or the other so I'm turning off curves this is what we get turn it back on we'll turn off levels this is what we get let's just see the original again there we go so this really helps with not having to worry about saving your history like adjust using the history brush which which is also very helpful but you won't have to worry about doing that with your image adjustments because you can actually save those and smart filter or smart objects actually have the ability to only affect what's inside the mask so let's say we get our black brush and we want to paint over her face and only her face or maybe we just want to do the sides here and the entire rest of the image, mainly her body, will be affected by the curves. So if we look, oops, let's select. If we look at the, um, at the mask, this is what it looks like. Everything that's white is being affected by curves and levels. Everything that's black is not going to be affected by that. So as we can see, that seems to be the case. And then we can even brush over her. Just to show you an example, that's what's happening. Thank you everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any tips or if you want to know any more tips, let us know in the comments below. Share your thoughts, share your tips, because I'm sure you all know more than way more than I do. And I'm not perfect, so I don't know everything. So let us know in the comments below. And if you don't know any more tips or you want to learn more, check out the comments. I'm sure a lot of people are going to give you suggestions on how you can do certain things. Should be a lot of fun. I'd love to hear what you all have to say. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.